Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, <clears throat> so now we're going to talk about some exercises, some actual strengthening exercises to increase core strength um, as well as to help increase control and mobility um, when we're talking about the core and, and the spine. So the first one we're going to talk about, we um, will kind of pick up where Craig may have left off on one of his videos when he was talking about bridges. Um, this one is for the quadratus lumborum, QL, um, which is going to run down from our, our pelvis up to our um, kind of floating ribs and as well as attached to our spine. And it's a nice stabilizer when it comes to the, the lumbar spine and pelvis. So we have a nice little progression that we can do for the QL side bridges, essentially. Um, so with this one, you can start with the patient where they, I hope you guys can see this, um, I'll get into a better position here, where, sorry, the, uh, the patient will be lying on their side, on their elbow, and then they're going to get a nice neutral position, hips stacked so they're not knees forward or anything like that. All in line and they're going to be on their elbows and their knees. So they'll just lift up to get in line and then come back down and up and they can hold that plank as long as they can tolerate um, or you can do repetitions. From there you can go to a hand and elbow. Okay. So now they have farther to go, um, and then you can go foot and elbow. Hopefully my feet don't slide off the plinth here. Um, again, they're just coming up to a neutral position. We're not trying to go way up there, um, and we don't want to be slouching down. Just get it right up and nice and stable. And then from there, you progress to a foot and hand. So now we're all the way up here and then back down. Then you can add some dynamic movement with the, uh, the upper body. You can do some PNF, you can do some, um, <coughs> my throat's starting to get scratchy. Been talking for too long. <coughs> um, I don't have coronavirus. Or maybe I do, I don't know. No, I'm kidding, I don't. Um, but you can, while they're doing those side bridges, just like normal bridges, you can and planks for that matter, you can add some dynamic movement with the upper extremity in there, um, or even the lower extremity when we're talking about side planks. Next, we have limb lifts on a ball. I'm going to move this back out of the way. Got our nice big purple ball here. Um, Pretty simple. Most people, when they think about limb lifts on a ball, they automatically go to limb lifts for lower extremity, which is great because we're engaging that core, trying to get them into a, <clears throat> a good position where they can stabilize and they're not going to be <laughs> falling all over, right? Um, but maybe just sitting on the ball is hard enough for them. And so just getting on the ball into a seated position and them having to hold themselves there. And then instead of going right to the movement of the legs, we go to movement of the upper extremity limbs instead of the lower extremity limbs. So I've worked with um, neuro patients where, again, just sitting on the ball was tough for them. So once we got to the point where they could at least stabilize themselves just sitting on the ball, then we added some dynamic movement with the upper extremity, doing our PNF patterns, grabbing on some uh, um, some theraband or some dumbbells, anything like that, to just increase the the need for a nice stable core and trunk um, while they're sitting on the ball. So that's the limb lifts sitting on ball. Next, we've got self-resistive. Um, Self-resistant cervical isometrics. So these ones are pretty simple. Um, pretty sure that the majority of you have probably done these at one point in your life. You just didn't realize this is what they were. 
but we got they're all isometrics so the patient is going to be trying to keep their head in that this position right we're not necessarily going into any of these motions we're just trying to keep them there and then we're going to resist or, or they're going to resist so if we're doing axial flexion we're going to put our ha hand on the front of their head and we're going to be trying to push them into extension while they try and maintain that neutral position by utilizing their their cervical flexors right so there and then we can do extension by trying to push them into flexion but they have to use their extensors to maintain that neutral position we can do rotation we go on either side the front and back and then we're trying to rotate them to the left they're trying to stay there using their right rotators same thing here i'm trying to push myself rotate to the right i've got to use my left rotators to maintain that position again all these are typically done with um, achieving an isometric contraction next this is a fun one ball walk for cervical stabilization so with this one i'm going to have to back up so i've got some walking room um, but you're going to start in a seated position and then they're going to slowly walk forward and as they do they've got to engage their neck flexors as they lower down got to keep them engaged and then all of a sudden we get out here now I've got to engage my extensors, but at the same time, I'm still kind of engaging my flexors, trying to maintain and support and stabilize myself. And I'm going to gauge those flexors again as I come back up. So that one's a, a fun one to do. Um, next, we've got trunk PNF, so our, our alternating isometrics and our rhythmic stabilization. Um, this one typically you'll do with the wand um, similar to what we showed you with the upper extremity exercises using alternating isometrics and rhythmic stabilization um, but now we're moving the wand in a way that yes they're going to be using their shoulders to try and keep it so it doesn't move but the shoulders will be very much connected to the trunk so we you know we can start in a supine position it says here so patients lying down they've got their wand here and we're trying to roll them from side to side to get that rhythmic stabilization um, then we can do it in a seated once we get into a seated position now we can address uh, a planar motion and so in addition to the rotation of that rhythmic stabilization now we can get alternating isometrics where we're pushing them back into extension they have to use their flexors to stay nice and stable we push on their back got to use their extensors so that we can't push them into flexion seated on a ball then they can go to a kneeling you can start with a short kneeling so again when we when we say short kneeling um, we're meaning more of a, a this position and then we've got our tall kneel and then we can go into a half kneel and these are all just progressions that we can um, <clears throat> positions that we can get them in to make it more challenging as we uh, we progress and then we got standing start with that wide base of support first again doing that rhythmic stabilization alternating isometrics all over and then go to a um, narrow base of support and then we'll go into a, a, a um, what it says here a tandem which is one foot in front of the other so now we we're looking something like this right um, and then tandem then single leg stance is our final progression there to as far as difficulty <coughs> um, and then we can start adding some some soft um, brain fart guys pad a foam pad or anything like that changing the surface that our patient's standing on I got there it's late and it's been a long day um, next we've got abdominal curl ups and curl downs so these are different than a sit-up where a lot of times with the sit-up um, 
you might encourage the patient to try and keep their thoracic spine a little bit more in this uh, um, maintain a neutral position, not allowing too much flexion or anything. These ones, you're actually going to start the cervical spine and they're just going to curl. Oh, guys, my tummy's weak. Um, they're going to curl all the way up and then all the way back down, nice and controlled. Okay? I got it. Got it. And then all the way back down. Okay, so those are curl ups, curls, curl downs. You can do diagonal, so as they come up, they're taking their elbow, trying to put it um, against the opposite leg, so they're reaching across their body as they curl up. Try it on the ball. I'm not going to, because that. Um, pelvic lifts. This is another fun one, but can be, uh, can be pretty intense just like camping. Um, ouch. So pelvic lifts with legs vertical. This one, um, actually before I get into this one, you can do straight leg raise of lifting it up and then slowly lowering it down. So their legs are nice and straight, you're gonna lift them up and then they're gonna slowly lower them down. Mm. That's our straight leg raise that uh, you guys should be familiar with. You can do it bilateral, you can do it single. Typically, if we want to really engage that core, then we're going to do bilateral. So the next one is the, um, what do I call it? Pelvic lift. Thank you, Johnny. Um, pelvic lift, so they can do a straight leg raise, bilateral straight leg raise. And then once they get up here, then they're going to, oh, and jut that forward, or jut their their legs straight up in the air. Okay. Now they're tough exercises, so obviously you're not going to be doing on that with, like, say, your 90 year old grandma, unless she's a crazy awesome 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 athlete. Um, but you can even progress with those, so they have to use their arms less and less. Now, you guys can probably tell because, or you at least knew because you know me, I'm weak. And so I was actually using my arms quite a bit, I'll be honest. But how them use it lower or less and less. Um, already talked about bilateral straight leg raise and lowering, theraband, trunk flexion and extension. Um, so you can do isometric both seated and standing like we already talked about where we're getting that alternating isometrics um, just by applying pressure or resistance on their chest trying to push them backwards or forwards you can do it standing you can do it seated to start off with um, and then we can do some more dynamic exercises where if you have it have the ability you can get some TheraBand or some TheraCord, attach it up high if we're going to do extent or excuse me flexion. So grab it on here and lowering down, pulling up against that TheraBand. Okay, um, we can do the same thing with extension. It's a little tough if you got the band up there. So typically you'll attach it a little bit lower, maybe like this, and then have them lean forward, tighten it up, and then. Whoop, my chair's gonna move as they go up against the resistance when they're resisting that or strengthening those extensors. Uh, and then we've got you can do that seated, you can do it on a ball, you can do it standing, all sorts of fun stuff um, with that. Then theraband, theraband trunk rotation. So this one again is one that you guys should be familiar with. Now we're going to try and stabilize the pelvis so that the belt buckle stays facing forward, facing, facing forward, and they rotate away from it um, to work in that transverse plane. 
And then we can have our outer di diagonals, our P and F, right? So if we take our band, um, we can work on our lifts and chops and <clears throat> So, um, we got our lifts coming up, and then our chops would be from here. And my lead arm is going down into D1 pattern. I don't know if we necessarily talked about that a whole lot, but a lift is um, it, it occurs within the D2 pattern for upper extremity. And it's all based on what the lead arm is doing. So if I'm saying that my right arm is my lead arm and I'm going up like this, maybe I have my left hand that's kind of either helping or just going along for the ride. Then, but I'm calling my right arm, my lead arm, then that would be called a lift. Now, if the resistance was coming from this direction and I was coming back down and my right arm was still my lead arm, then that would be called a reverse lift. Um, now if I'm, again, my right arm is, is staying my lead arm, my resistance is coming from up here, and I'm going down into the D2 position, I'm really getting my trunk into it, or a D2 pattern, then that's gonna be called a chop. Now if I'm coming back up, my resistance down here, and my right arm is my lead arm, then that would be a reverse chop. I know it's confusing, but that's the way it's called. So that's what it's called. Um, and with those reverse, or with those chops and lifts, I'm gonna start in that trunk rotation and come up and really exaggerate, really wanna get my trunk rotating during both of those, either a lift, or a chop, okay? Um, again, another couple exercises that I loved doing with, with my patients. Um, last couple here, sideline trunk lateral flexion. So this one, patients lying on their side, just like it says, sideline, and they have their arm at their side to start off with, and they just come up reaching their hand down their knee as far as they can get it, making sure that they're not doing any of this, right? They're just coming straight up. And then they can do it with their hands behind their head, coming up. Again, we're utilizing those obliques, getting the QL in there a little bit. And then if you really wanna go crazy, you can stabilize their lower half, have their top half off of the table, and they have to lift up. So now we're going from a really la left lateral bended position and pulling all the way through past neutral to as far as we can right lateral bend because of the fact that they're hanging off the table. Um, the last two, we have pelvic rocking and pelvic clock. So pelvic rocking is essentially, we're gonna have the patient, I'm just, well, I'll, I guess I'll lie down. You typically have your patient in a supine position and you have them go into posterior pelvic tilt and anterior pelvic tilt and just back and forth. And so they're rocking their pelvis backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. And this can be helpful um, if they have very tight pelvic muscles or, or they have little to no control of their pelvis itself. So it helps them increase their proprioception of the pelvis and understand exactly where they're at. It can also help really well with helping um, to find your neutral pelvis. So they can find their extremes of both positions and then there, there's my neutral pelvis, okay? And then we, you can do side to side as well. So I'm just rocking from one side to the other. Um, and then the last thing that's on there, 
pelvic clock. Uh, now we're just doing all of those kind of in combination. So posterior pelvic tilt is going to be 12 o'clock. And then a right pelvic tilt is going to be 3 o'clock. 6 o'clock is going to be our anterior pelvic tilt. And then 9 o'clock is going to be our left pelvic tilt. And so you'll just tell them to, you know, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 9 o'clock. And they have to go around and hit those four points. Uh, and that's what we commonly call or refer to as the pelvic clock. Okay? Um, and that's it as far as this video goes. Um, Craig, if you've already watched his, you know what is involved in there. If you haven't watched his videos yet, um, that's going to involve drawing in and then a lot of stabilization, core stabilization exercises and um, progressive limb loading is what we call those. Um, great exercises, make sure you are familiar with those, um, especially when it comes practical time because um, there are quite a few cases that will involve progressive limb loading, both the cervical spine and of the, uh, the lumbar spine so um, great job guys I, I'll be honest totally miss seeing you guys all the time like it's still weird even though it's been a couple of weeks but um, can't wait until everything's cleared up or the week at the okay that we can come back and we can see you okay love you guys bye